After explaining the fall of the Lydian Empire and the capture of Crucis, its um, last king, Herodotus turns his focus uh, to telling us who the Persians were, and in particular who Cyrus the Great was. Um, and at this point, it kind of goes on, a, on another tangent. This is something Herodotus does a lot in the book. He's telling us this story of the Greco-Persian War. But then well, uh, very often he goes on a tangent to give us details, uh, to give us other stories. Um, so this one of those, uh, and he goes on a tangent to tell us about the, the rise of the Mede, the Mede Empire. Uh, which was later taken over by the Persians. And <clears throat> the reason I, I, I didn't want, in, initially I thought I didn't need to tell this part of the book, of the story, but I decided to do it because of another book that I've read, a great book, a really interesting book. Uh, and it's the book, The Laws of Human Nature, or it's The Law of Human Nature by Robert Greene. And I will explain why. So <clears throat> Herodotus tells us uh, he decides to go way back to where the Persian Empire started. And he tells us about the Medes, who were the lords of the Persians for a while. And he tells us that um, at some point, the Medes, who were a collection of tribes living on the land we know today as Azerbaijan, um, didn't have a king. And in, initially, in fact, they were part of the Assyrian Empire. They were under the Assyrian Empire. And they were among the first groups of people to revolt against the Assyrian Empire. And, and they kind of pushed out the Assyrians out of their land. And they became independent. But once they became independent, um, they didn't have a king. It was not part of their culture to have a king. So they continued living as just a group of tribes on the land. But then they had this culture of having um, some wise people within the communities being the judges. Like if there's a dispute between two or three or more people, then this person will sit and listen to the dispute and then pass judgment. Um, whichever way they think is, is fair. <clears throat> so, and these, these judges were not appointed by anyone, really. They were just individuals who presented themselves to, to hear disputes. And if people trusted you, they will come to you for a resolution of any disputes. So, um, one of those judges was diocese. Uh, diocese became one of those people, his... Um, kinsmen or people from his tribe will go to present uh, disputes and he will listen and he will um, <clears throat> he will give out judgment and he he, he, pop, he became very popular as someone who was very fair and over time more and more people preferred him to listen to their disputes because he was fair he listened he passed fair judgments and and his popularity grew within the tribes around and at some point, he was like the only person people wanted to come to when they had disputes. And it became a lot of work for him. Uh, Herodotus ins insinuates that uh, Diocese had this as a long-term plan. He insinuated that Diocese wanted to be the king of the Medes, but he was playing like um, he was just somebody doing something and things were happening on their own. So... At some point, he told his tribesmen and others around that he was no longer interested in being a judge because it was taking a lot of his time and he was neglecting um, at the expense of his own personal um, uh, activities. So he, he, he took a break and um, during that time, chaos became a lot on the land, like People, there were a lot more murders. People were grabbing each other's property. There was a lot of chaos. And um, the people met and said, we cannot continue living like this. We need to find um, <clears throat> to find um, order, so to create order. And maybe the best way to do that is to, to have a king. And they agreed that was what was going to happen. And then now the question became, who was going to be 
the, that king and they were like no Diocese is perfect for that post he is proven himself to be a very fair man and they reached out to him and they were like we want you to be our king and initially he said uh, kind of like no but then he said yes but then he gave them conditions like if you want me to be your king then you have to build me a big palace and you have to build a big city that will be the headquarter of that of whatever kingdom i'm going to oversee so that's what they did they built a big city they built him a big palace and here is now the reason why i decided to 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 create this video and tell this particular part of Hereditor's um, book. Reading Robert Greene's book, um, Laws of Human Nature, he talks about the emotion of envy. And uh, he explains that envy is almost the only emotion that none of us acknowledges we have. Like we can talk of being sad, being angry, we can tell other people we are all those other emotions. Or being fearful but hardly any of us says i'm envious of somebody like it's what that emotion we hide and in robert green's book he talks about he, he goes into detail explaining the nature of envy and how um, dangerous it can be and how sometimes we underestimate its uh, power so diocese uh, okay before i go to diocese and how this relates Robert Greens explains that the people who are the most obvious, uh, envious of another, are those who saw them before they were successful. So the people who knew you before you were successful and you were at the same level, if you become successful they are, and they don't, they remain behind, they are the ones who are most likely to be very envious. The others who did not know you before you were successful are kind of like indifferent to your success. So that's what uh, Robert Greene explains. Now, Diocese seems to have known about this na human nature. And when, see, when, when he told his people to build him an empire, uh, no, a palace, he wanted the palace to be so large and then he had an inner court where he stayed by himself with a few servants of both. And he continued to serve as a judge, but now he refused to come meet the people. Anybody who had a dispute had to write it down, send it through messengers, and the messenger will deliver the, the dispute, and he will listen to both sides through the text. And then he will issue his judgment and send back um, the judgment as, as text. Herodotus explains that the reason why the diocese did this is because he was trying to protect himself from the people he grew up with, the people who were his equals, people who were of his level before he became king because he thought they would be envious of him and they might do some harm to him. And so that's why he did that. So diocese ruled for a very long time. I think Herodotus puts it around 50 something years. I think I might be wrong. And then his son Priorites took over. Priorites died, and then Zyaxares took over. Zyaxares is of 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 the people who came after um, Diocese. Zyaxares, Zyaxares, sorry, is is um, among the most known. Is among the most uh, mentioned in historical document. And then when he was, because he also engaged in a lot of war with the neighboring empires and. He was a major <clears throat> player in that region. When he died, his son Astyages took over. And now, Astyages is now our link between uh, this entire story and the story that the Redditors, like the, the primary story Redditors is trying to tell of the Persian and the Greek war. And the, the link is Astyages was the grandfather of Cyrus the Great. But Cyrus the uh, Astyages at one point wanted Cyrus the Great to be killed while he was, in fact, immediately was born. Astyages wanted him killed because he, because of a dream he had had, and he didn't want that boy to become a king after him. Yeah, and that's what I will explain in the next video. Thank you.